Hey, what is going on guys and welcome to another signal processing tutorial. Today we're going to cover transfer functions and the components which make up a transfer function and how they impact signals as they're passing through a system. In previous videos we've been calculating the gain of specific op-amp circuits when in reality we've been calculating the transfer function for these circuits. What do I mean by this? Well, as we've been talking about gain, we've primarily been talking about how the magnitude of a signal changes as it passes through a system. For instance, if our red signal was our input signal and our blue signal was our output signal, we would roughly have a magnitude output two times that of the input. In other words, we would have a gain of two. However, these systems not only change the magnitude of our signal, but also change the phase of our signal. Now the phase of a signal can be thought of as a delay without changing the signal itself. For instance, if we had our red input signal here, our blue output signal has the exact same shape, however, it's been delayed slightly. Lastly, we have the S-plane. Now the S-plane is a way of visualizing terms which have an imaginary and real component. For instance, S plus 2, as we've mentioned previously, S is simply J omega plus 2. Therefore, we have an imaginary component of omega and a real component of 2. If we were to plot this on our S-plane graph, we could think of the magnitude as the hypotenuse of the right angled triangle that omega and our two real value would make up. The phase can be thought of as the theta of our right angled triangle. And if we were to calculate the theta, we would have theta equals arctan of the opposite over the adjacent side, where our opposite would be our imaginary component and our adjacent would be our real component. If you're unfamiliar with this, I'd recommend that you go back to your trigonometry and remember Sokotoa. Okay, so let's move on. Why don't we have an example and try and calculate its magnitude and phase to hopefully make this a little bit clearer. Let's have the transfer function T of S is equal to S plus 4 divided by S plus 2. Now, when we're taking the magnitude or phase, we like to rewrite this in the form of T of J omega just to make things clearer about which components are the imaginary and which components are the real. That equals j omega plus 4 divided by j omega plus 2. Now, the magnitude of t of j omega is simply the magnitude of the top term divided by the magnitude of the bottom term. As we called the magnitude the hypotenuse of this right angled triangle from the imaginary and real component, we can think of it as the square root of the sum of squares. In other words, the magnitude of t of j omega is equal to the square root of our imaginary component squared, which is simply omega squared, plus our real component squared, which is 16, divided by the square root of our imaginary component squared again, which is simply omega squared, plus 2 squared, which is 4. Now, if we wanted to find the magnitude of an output signal at a given input frequency, we can simply sub in that frequency for omega. For instance, if we had an input signal of one radian per second, we could sub in one for omega, which would give the square root of 17 divided by the square root of five. Now that would be roughly equal to 1.84. So if our input wave of one radian per second had a magnitude of one, the output wave the output wave would also be 1 radian per second. However, it would have a magnitude of 1.84 times the input signal. Let's move on to the phase now. Remember, the phase can be thought of as the theta in our right angled triangle. Therefore, we can take the arctan of our top term, j omega plus 4. The phase, which is often denoted by this symbol, is equal to the arctan of our opposite side, which is our imaginary value, in this case, omega, divided by our real component, 4, subtract the phase of our denominator, which is simply, again, arctan, simply our imaginary component, omega, divided by our real component, 2. Now, if we wanted to find the phase shift of a signal given a specific frequency, we could simply plug that frequency in for omega as we have done in our magnitude and find the corresponding phase shift amount. Okay guys, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a better understanding of what is meant by transfer functions now and especially a better understanding of what is meant by the magnitude and phase. 
The face can be hard to get used to at the start, but don't worry about it. Hopefully this has given you a better understanding. If not, just make sure you do a couple of questions. Most of them will follow a similar method to what we've done here, so nothing should be too scary for you. As always, if you had any problems at all, feel free to let me know in the comments down below and I'll get back to you, and I'll see you guys in the next one.